Hello everyone, my name is Rick, Rick van Bruggen from Neo Technology, and uh, tonight I am going to record a podcast episode that I've been looking forward to, to for a very long time with my dear friend in dark, rainy, beautiful Portland, uh, Andreas Colliger. Hi, Andreas. Hello, Rick. Hello, thank you for having me on the podcast today. Yeah, no, it's such a it's such a joy. Thanks for coming on. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to call you ABK for short, if you don't mind. And lots of people know you as ABK. Um, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Andreas? You've been part of the Neo4j ecosystem for a very long time, but maybe some people don't know you yet. Sure. Uh, uh, my, my name is uh, Andreas B. Colliger. I'll, I'll let the B be a mystery for, for the moment. Uh, I work for Neo Technology, and I've been a part of the, the Neo4j community for, it feels like, as long as I can remember, um, uh, from at least as long back as, like, the I think it was the 0.9 release of Neo4j. No way. And, yeah, it's, it's been quite a while, and I've, I've, I've grown from community member all the way through to now being a product manager or product designer, depending on who you talk to and the time of day. <laughs> That's very funny. Um, <laughs> so, and, and you've been a great stimulator of the Neo4j community. I, I remember talking to people, you know, on the East Coast, West Coast, South, you know, wherever that said, you know, ABK made me start up a community uh, over here or a meetup over here. You know, you've been part of it for such a long time, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I mean, from when we were purely just trying to like, you know, get things going and, and get you know excited with, you know, through meetups and lots of uh, events, I'm actually trying to continue that that trend. When I was on the East Coast, it was my duty and honor and pleasure to like travel up and down from almost all the way from Boston down to around Washington, having meetups, meeting people, talking whenever I could about New4j and spreading the, the great love of graphs that I'd found. Yeah. And I'm, I'm doing the same now here in Portland. I'm Actually, tonight would be my very first uh, community meetup in, in Portland. I'm very excited about that. Super cool, super cool. So when, when you say, you know, product manager, product designer, you know, what does that mean? You know, what do you, what do, you do as a day job? Yeah, that's why the sort of manager versus designer split is, is interesting. Um, when I moved into like this, this role, it was thought of more as doing product design, which I guess it's certainly a bit of a vague term. Um, if you're, if we were building, you know, physical products like phones or something, then I would very clearly be doing like uh, graphic design for the phones or like in 3D or something. Um, sculpting physical objects would, would be sort of product part of the product design. But uh, as a uh, involved in a software project, product design ranges a bit more obviously from the the front end user experience elements of of the product. But also we thought about it as being uh, paying a bit more attention to sort of the experience generally of using Neo4j. So any, any of the parts that you touch of Neo4j, um, whether it's an API or the documentation um, on through to the website, um, it was thought that like it'd be good to have somebody just trying to connect all the different parts and have them all make sense so that when you read something on the website, it reflected how the product actually behaved and that the product you know, messages and things had the same kind of voice and tone as, as maybe some of our blog posts. Um, but obviously that was only really something that when we were a smaller organization made sense. And now that we've, we've, we've grown substantial, we have people who are superb at each one of these things. Yeah. Um, I, I've been doing less and less of sort of that focus and thinking much more in terms of just purely product management type stuff, which is taking on different features of Neo4j, uh, <laughs> taking a look, I guess, at the, the giant list of things we would love for Neo4j to become and what it is today and where we think we're going and figuring out what to do next and how much of it to do next. But you're forgetting one big thing, right, Andreas? I mean, mm. the you're, you're the movie star in the Neo4j trainings, right? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose that's true. I, I, I do forget that. And every now and again, I'll, I'll still meet people and they'll look at me and they'll think, wait, I, I know you, aren't yeah, are you yeah, the yeah. guy? From the videos? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. That is me. So if you... I've had the pleasure of using our online tutorials and watching the short video clips. That that is me in, in the video clips. Exactly. Yeah, in a beautiful tie, and you know, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so why graphs uh, and uh, ABK? You know, how do you, you know what attracted you to the gra to the graphs uh, in the first place? And you know, why what what fires you up every morning to keep on working on this stuff? Yeah, I, I have to say that my motivation hasn't changed since the early days of when I first went and tracked down Neo4j that uh, I, I was in, in that generation of people who, um, you know, 
started looking for a graph before we knew we were looking for a graph. Um, I, I, I've been doing international nonprofit work and I was, you know, uh, actually with this wonderful organization doing work in sub-Saharan Africa and effectively it was medical informatics work, right? We were doing um, patient care and, you know, uh, and disease surveillance and things like that. And so many of the data models we were working with, we, we had the sort of classic realization that uh, our you know, sort of traditional good old relational database models were either really perfect and awesome for the reporting we needed to do, but maybe not so great for actually doing any analysis and trying to understand public health concerns. Like, why did this pattern of, of disease progress in the way that it did? Um, and sort of collectively, I think we had an understanding that what we were doing was a graph problem. We mm -hmm. didn't think about it, I think, in that way. Um, except that I, I happened to be lucky enough to be at the time living in Baltimore and one of my neighbors um, was heavy into ontology databases. And I was looking at his database and I thought, oh, wow, that's that's brilliant. That's that's maybe exactly what I want. Yeah. Um, and, he, you know, he talked to me about it and said, well, m maybe, but this is, you know, maybe more than you actually need. There, there could be something in between that uh, has the flexibility and the expressiveness of an ontology database, but without being as like entirely prescriptive. So it could be a bit more flexible for the application and, and easy to use. Um, and, he, and he actually introduced me to New4j. He's like, why don't you go check out this project? It looks like it might be perfect for what you're trying to get done. And I fell in love. It was, it was, it was exactly what I wanted. It thought about data the way that I wanted to think about data. And so I used it for a few projects. I, it, I tried to um, you know, get involved with the community and make some, some, some contributions of my own to the, the code base. And that's what began my, my lifelong, you know, sort of journey with Neo 4 j and uh, the organization and community. Do you remember what was like the, the, the killer feature that attracted you to, you know, sort of get started with it? You know, what, what was that? Was it the domain model or what was it exactly that, that, that attracted you so much? It, it, it was, honestly, it was this whole, the simple to say, you know, thing that like it's all about relationships, right? Like it's, yeah. it's, almost, it's almost trite, but like that, that simple shift in thinking from looking at the and caring about the individual records, but to thinking about like, well, how do these records relate? That's where all the value was and all the data modeling I was doing, all the applications I was doing, it, that was so much more powerful than the individual records themselves, because that's what let like, you see patterns and progressions of things. And uh, Neo4j elevated it and it made it an actual concern you dealt with as part of normal modeling rather than, you know, maybe later on you, you add in some foreign key constraints or something. Yeah, totally. Is, is that something that you still think is, is you know, like a core thing to the product? Uh, you know, this you know, relationship-centric view on things, is that still like the, one of the core things? I, I do think that, that it really is. I think that's certainly where... Um, in, in the sort of the long-term, you know, relationship with the graph model is that's where the, the power is, is, is in the relationships. Yeah. Um, and I think one of the sort of near term challenges we have in startup challenges is that, um, or like, you know, getting people, you know, introduced to Neo4j, like I happen to have my own, you know, epiphany. I realized this is what I want. And so it felt perfect and it was awesome. But until you think in that way, um, it can seem weird, right? And so I, I feel like we're in this place where we've, we've done a really great job with you know, making graphs awesome, um, but we can actually do a little bit more to make graphs easy to use as well. Um, as it is right now, maybe you have to do, you know, it, it's great that you think about relationships, but if you're always thinking about relationships, then some, some amount of structuring and just sort of getting started, it's like you have to think too much. And we'd like to find a nice balance between you have to think only a little bit. If you're doing something simple, then you don't have to think too much. The simple things are you know, really easy to do, but you don't get caught into a corner where because we've made it too simple, it's hard to do the, the more expressive you know, and uh, richer things. Mm -hmm. And so that that's a balance I think that we're trying to move towards in the next, um, actually sort of in the next release as well. We're, we're starting to put in some, some bits of, of capabilities that'll make that, uh, I think, a nicer interaction you know what you're you're setting yourself up for for my final question you know well where is it all, where is it all going in this you know where, where, where do you see you know the industry but also the product uh, you know in a couple of years from now you know what's the what does the future hold 
Yeah, I, I think that sort of within the industry, if that's the, the broader database industry and sort of we're part of the, the, the NoSQL segment of it, which I think people finally realized like isn't really a separate segment. It's just like people trying to deal with lots of data and figure out what the best way is to work with all, all that data. And from each of our different, you know, sort of starting points, whether it's graph databases or, you know, the column stores or the, you know, uh, uh, key values or, you know, anything else that we're all, of course, iterating on on our worldview and slowly progressing towards a common understanding that we want to be able to do all of the things really well. Um, of, of course, I still think that in, in the, you know, the end uh, of the day that, that, that graphs, of course, are going to be the best way always to think about everything. Um, but as I was just saying, I guess, like maybe they have a little bit of extra thinking you've got to do just before you start structuring things. Mm -hmm. um, so there's things we can do to, to improve that. But I, I feel like within the next couple of years, you'll see other databases realize that they want to do graph stuff and they'll, they'll start adding graph features. And you'll see, you know, us making it easier to do stuff that isn't strictly graph stuff like um, s simple things like, let's say, you know, my, my favorite is always to say if you want to manage a, a list of things. It's very easy to conceive of, but you've got to do a little bit of work if what you're doing is always managing, you know, relationships and connecting and disconnecting things. Yeah. Um, that that should be, you know, dead simple to do. And I think we're going to, you're going to see in the next couple of years that we have an easy way of addressing that as well. Super cool. So what's your favorite feature in uh, Neo4j 3.0? <laughs> Sorry, well, quick question. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. And, and of course, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that carefully. So there's there's two things I'm excited about in New 3.0. One one is actually just a very simple change to how we um, present. Uh, what's currently called New4j Browser, so it's our, our, our the user client for, yep. for accessing the database. Mm -hmm. And we're taking just some practical steps there to like actually separate development of that from development of, of the database. And be coupling that with the the new protocol that we have, this Bolt protocol for uh, um, connecting with Neo4j, gives us the opportunity to do something that was awkward to do previously, which is that you can run Neo4j client separate from Neo4j, and it can connect to any Neo4j database that happens to be up. It doesn't have to be tied to the database um, that started up, right? Yep. Um, I think that's going to be brilliant. For just day-to-day -day use of Neo4j, it'll it'll make you know it much more pleasurable. And also, we'll be able to deliver sort of the client separately from the browser and have, you know, I'm sorry, from the, from the database and have more frequent updates and, and feature requests going in. So, so that'll be pretty exciting. Super. You know what? I think there's so many nice things that we could talk about. Uh, but as you know, I want to keep these podcasts uh, digestible and short so that people can, you know, listen to it on, uh, on their uh, commute. So I'm going to thank you so much for, uh, for coming online, Andreas. And, uh, you know, it was been a very um, nice conversation. I really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, thanks again, man. I look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> thank you, Rick. This was great fun. We'll have yeah. a beer soon. Absolutely. No doubt. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers.